Capital punishment in China should not be confused with death sentence with reprieve, which is a form of lenient sentencing that is handed down by Chinese courts as frequently as, or more often than, actual death sentences. Death sentence with reprieve is used to emphasize the seriousness of the crime and the mercy of the court, and sometimes inaccurately added to the number of actual death sentences. Capital punishment is a legal penalty in the mainland of the People's Republic of China. It is mostly enforced for murder and drug trafficking, and executions are carried out by lethal injection or gunshot. Mainland China, commonly employs two methods of execution. Since 1949, the most common method has been execution by firing squad, which has been largely superseded by lethal injection, using the same three-drug cocktail pioneered by the United States. Introduced in 1996, execution vans are unique to China, however, Lethal injection is more commonly used for economic crimes such as corruption, while firing squads are used for more common crimes like murder. In 2010, Chinese authorities moved to have lethal injection become the dominant form of execution. In some provinces and municipalities, it is now the only legal form of capital punishment. It is impossible to ascertain whether these guidelines are closely followed, as the method of execution is rarely specified in published reports in China. The execution van, also called a mobile execution unit, was developed by the government of the People's Republic of China and was first used in 1997. The prisoner is strapped to a stretcher and executed inside the van. The van allows death sentences to be carried out without moving the prisoner to an execution ground. The vans also require less manpower per execution, requiring four persons to assist with the injection and are mobile. China states that the vans are more humane than previous forms of execution. In 2004, Amnesty International predicted that the execution rate in China would increase because of mobile capital punishment. However, the number of executions dropped steadily in the 2000s, and significantly since 2007, when the Supreme People's Court regained the power to review all death sentences. A converted 24-seat bus the execution van keeps the appearance of a normal police van on the outside with no markings indicating its purpose. The rear of the vehicle houses a windowless chamber where the execution takes place. Several cameras are present and feed closed circuit televisions in the front of the van. A recording can be made if desired. The bed itself slides out of the wall under its own power, on which the convicted person is strapped down. A syringe is put into the arm by a technician and a police official administers the injection by pressing a button. Human rights groups have reported that China carries out the highest number of executions of any country. It is believed that China has put to death. 5,000 to 6,000 for 2007, and in 2019, it is confirmed that mainland China executes more people than all other countries combined. Capital punishment was one of the classical five punishments of China's dynastic period. In Chinese philosophy, capital punishment was supported by the legalists but its application was tempered by the confidence, who preferred rehabilitation and mercy over capital punishment. Confucius did not oppose capital punishment absolutely, but did take the view that in a well-ordered society based on moral persuasion, capital punishment would become unnecessary. During China's early dynasties, 
capital punishment and amputation were predominant among the five punishments. Later, amputation became less common, but capital punishment and corporal punishment remained. There was wide variability in the number of types of capital offenses over time. Under the punishments of Lu, written sometime in the Warring States period, there were 200 capital offenses. The Tank Code listed 233 capital offenses, and the Song Dynasty retained these and added 60 more over time. Under the Yuan Dynasty, the number of separate capital provisions precipitously dropped, reaching a low of 125 crimes. The number of capital offenses spiked again under the dynasty, with 282 capital offenses, and the Qing dynasty, with more than 800 capital offenses. Poorer and lower status Chinese were most often subject to capital punishment. However, officials and others of high rank were put to death as a means of social control in times of war, internal disarray, or strife. King Wu of the Western Zhu ordered officials who violated royal regulations, failed to carry out their duties, or promulgated innovations to be put to death. 39 military officials were executed. Following a peasant uprising during the Tang Dynasty, the six gentlemen of the Hundred Days Reform, who advocated social reform in the late Qing Dynasty were executed. The first type of classical punishment was a system of torture, used in the process of examining a criminal. Examining a criminal by torture began in the Qing Dynasty, when judges, after a preliminary hearing and investigation, used bambooing and bastinado to force the offender to admit to committing the crime. Second, there was a system of collective responsibility initiated by Duke Wen of the state of Qin. Under that system, when the criminal is sentenced to death, all other family members were also sentenced to death. This included the wife's family or siblings' families. At some point, even the families of a man's concubines were also killed. Thirdly, there was a system of revenge based on the Confucian philosophy centered around filial piety. The right to seek retribution was codified in the legal code of the Qing dynasty which describes the legal proceedings and punishments for family members who seek revenge and kill the murderer of their relatives. The fourth type of punishment system was structured according to booty, loot, and spoil. Following conviction of these crimes, the punishment ranged from 50 blows or death by hanging. Finally, the fifth classical punishment was a system advocating amnesty, probation, and parole. However, this system of punishment was not practiced often because the Chinese legal system asserted a retributive theory of punishment. The absolute number of executions from capital punishment in mainland China, by both confirmed and estimated data, is far higher than that of any other country. Although it is lower in relative terms per capita than those of several other countries, including Saudi Arabia, Iran and Iraq. The number of executions has dropped steadily in the 2000s, and significantly since 2007, when the Supreme People's Court regained the power to review all death sentences. For instance, the DUI Hu Foundation estimates that China executed 12,000 people in 2002, 6,500 people in 2007, and roughly 2,400 in 2013 and 2014. Given conservative and variable estimates of executions in China, 
Executions in China account for more than 58% in 2009 and 65% in 2010 of those worldwide. The exact numbers of people executed in mainland China is classified as a state secret. Occasionally death penalty cases are posted publicly by the judiciary, as in certain high-profile cases. One such example was the execution of former State Food and Drug Administration Director Zhen Xiaoyu. Little is known of how many people exactly are executed in China. Before a person is finally executed there are legal procedures that applies, after a first trial conducted by an intermediate people's court concludes with the death sentence. A double appeals process must follow. The first appeal is conducted by a high people's court if the condemned appealed to it, and since 2007. Another appeal is conducted automatically by the Supreme People's Court of the People's Republic of China in Beijing. To prevent the circumstances in which the defendant is proved innocent after the death penalty, an obviously irrevocable punishment has been administered. When a case involving the death penalty is sent to the SPC for mandatory review, the case is delivered to one of the court's five divisions according to the geographic origin of the case or, in some cases, the type of crime involved. The space's second criminal division is dedicated to handling review of some of the most sensitive cases. Each case is then assigned to a panel of three judges, one of whom is designated as the principal case manager. Since 2012, judges are also required to interview defendants before deciding whether or not to confirm a death sentence. The judges write reports summarizing the case, discuss the case, and then report the decision to the division head, space vice president, and finally the space president. If the lower court death sentence is upheld, the execution is carried out shortly thereafter. As a result of its reforms, the PRC's government claims, the Supreme People's Court overturned about 15% of the death sentences handed down by high courts in the first half of 2008. The list of capital crimes includes counter-revolutionary crimes such as organizing an armed mass rebellion, endangerment of public security, such as committing arson, and crimes against the person, such as the rape of a person under the age of 14. During the 1980s, economic crimes such as bribery, drug trafficking, and embezzlement were added to the legal code. Capital punishment in China can be imposed on crimes against national symbols and treasures, such as theft of cultural relics and the killing of giant pandas. Executions under the pretense of political crimes are extremely rare and confined to persons involved in violence or the threat of violence. Thirteen crimes were removed from the list of capital offenses in 2011 including smuggling of cultural relics, wildlife products, and precious metals. This brought the total number of capital offenses down from 68 to 55, though many of the crimes dropped from the list were rarely if ever punished with death penalty. The draft Ninth Amendment of China, criminal law was passed on the 29th of August 2015 which reduced the number of crimes on the list of capital offenses by 9 to 46. The crimes that were removed were smuggling weapons or ammunition, smuggling nuclear materials, smuggling counterfeit money, counterfeiting, investment fraud, fraudulent fundraising, organizing prostitution, forcing prostitution, obstructing military affairs, spreading rumors and undermining morale during wartime. 
Thank you for watching Death Row.